question I'm often asked is how do I paint white subjects on white watercolour paper? That's the topic of today's video. As you probably know, when we paint in watercolour, we don't paint white. Instead, the white of the paper becomes the white areas of our subject. We paint shadows around the white areas to help create the form of what it is we're painting. What do you do if the subject of the whole painting is white? Today, I want to quickly show you a few of my paintings that have white subjects, and I'll demonstrate how I painted this cockatoo. Over the years, I've painted quite a few different white subjects. While they are different subjects, my method of painting remains similar on all of them. There's quite a few things I do when I paint white subjects. I work from photographs most of the time, so before I start painting, I look at the photo and I determine what colours I see. I determine where the lightest parts of the subject are, and then I look for the darkest areas. I also look for colours that are reflecting in the white and I have to decide whether I see warm colours or cool colours. Sometimes all I see is grey and to make the subject more interesting I'll paint the shadow areas of it in grey but I'll drop in other colours to liven the grey up. The other thing I try to do is I keep most of my colours on the pale side. Let's have a quick look at this white rose that I painted. It was easy to see the colours in the cup of the rose here. I was able to use warm colours to separate the petals from one another while I left the white of the paper showing on the lightest areas. Then I had to turn my attention to the shadows on the outer petals and that's where I noticed some reflected colours. When I look closely at this shadow here, for example, I see cool blues and purples. And I made sure I dropped some blues and purples onto the grey while I painted that area. Over here in this shadow, the main colour is grey, but I see some green, so I dropped some green into the grey before it dried. Here I see some warmer colours, so I used some of the warmer colours that I'd painted in the centre. Sometimes when I paint, I'll take some artistic licence and I'll add colours that I don't necessarily see on the reference photo. I know I need to liven it up a little, so I try to make it a bit more interesting, like I did on this cow painting. I didn't really see these blues and purples in the shadows, but I wanted to liven her up and improve on my reference photo, so I added them to add interest to my greys. I'll show you how I painted this cockatoo painting, but before I do, I want to thank Skillshare for sponsoring this video. I've been working with Skillshare for a few years now, and I've just published my 11th class with them. My latest class is all about using the wet on wet technique to paint fur. I've put links to all my classes in the description of this video. Skillshare is an online learning platform where you can choose from thousands of inspiring classes on lots of different topics, not just painting. They have classes on illustration, design, photography, video and plenty more. So there's something for everyone and Skillshare is affordable when compared to face-to-face -face workshops. An annual subscription is less than $10 a month. I'm enjoying this class by Nikki Stevens. It's called Creative Video Storytelling and Editing, Making the Most of Stock Footage. This class is giving me lots of ideas about how I can include stock footage into my videos and make them more interesting. So if you're stuck at home and feeling anxious and wondering what to do with yourself, go and have a look at Skillshare. I've put a link at the top of the description of this video. 
the first 500 subscribers to click the link will get a two month free trial of premium membership so you can explore your creativity. All right, let's have a look at this cockatoo. This is a piece of Arsh hot pressed watercolor paper. This is watercolor board, which unfortunately they don't make anymore. I'm using a Da Vinci Casaneo mop brush and I've just painted on some water onto the head of the cockatoo. I want to paint on the wet paper because I want my paint edges to be soft. This is a grey that I've mixed up from Burnt Sienna and French Ultramarine. I'm beginning to paint in the shadow that I see sitting above the beak. So I've extended it behind the eye and over the top of the beak there. To make this grey more interesting, I'm dropping in some Windsor Violet and that helps to take the drabness of the grey away. And I plan on repeating this colour on the background, which will help to tie everything together. Watercolour paint tends to dry lighter than it looks when it's wet. So here I'm increasing the pigment and making it darker. When I look at my reference photo, I can see a warm colour in that shadow, so I'm dropping in some burnt sienna as well. Moving down a bit further, I see a darker shadow under the cheek feathers, so I've wet this area with water, again to keep my paintages soft, and I'm painting the grey that I mixed up there. dropping in some violet on top of that grey again just to add interest to the colour. Apart from the beak and the eye this is the darkest area on the cockatoo so I can make the colour a bit deeper here. Over here the colour is lighter so I'll suggest a few feathers but I'll keep the paint fairly pale. Now I'm wetting this area below the eye. And I'll use some of that grey, fairly pale, to suggest a few feathers there. There's not much going on in the reference photo, so I just put them wherever I think I need them. I think I'll put some violet there as well. Now I'm going to paint the beak in. I'm using French Ultramarine to paint an underwash. And that will sit underneath a darker colour. It will show through in places. Before that blue dries, I use some Payne's Grey to darken the beak. Because it's wet, the colours blend together softly. I've got a fair amount of pigment there, it's quite dark. And up here it's quite dark under the feathers. So I've got a lot of pigment there as well. This is Payne's Grey that I'm using. And before the beak dries I drop in some water droplets to create some watercolour blooms that will create texture on the beak. Now I want to add some detail to the feathers around the beak. I paint these feathers by wetting the area underneath each feather and then applying the paint while the paper's damp. That creates a shadow where one feather sits over the other. I use the violet here too to make the grey more interesting. I've demonstrated this technique before in one of my other videos so take a look at that if you want to see me painting some other birds like this. So that's violet that I've just put over the grey. And as 
I said before, the water on the paper keeps those paint edges soft. If I need to soften them further, I'll take a damp brush and wipe over the edge of the paint. Then when I've painted all those in, I can add some little extra details over here on the dry paper. I make sure that I keep my paint fairly pale. To make the cockatoo stand out more, I decided to paint the background as well. And it's the background that will form the edge of the bird in places. I paint some water on to the paper before I put the paint on because I want to keep all the paint edges fairly soft on the background as well. I paint it carefully up against the feathers because that forms the edge of the feathers. And then I can relax when I get away from the bird. This is cobalt blue that I'm using. I'm going to use a combination of cobalt blue and Windsor violet. I used the Windsor Violet on the bird, so I want to repeat it on the background. So here I'm using the Windsor Violet. You can see that that's forming the edge of the bird there. I've gone quite dark there because I have water on the paper. I know that that will dilute the paint and I know that when it's dry it won't be quite as dark as this. I keep going all the way around, but I put the darkest colour at the front of the head. That's where I want the focus to be. So the paint's quite wet. Then I add some extra water droplets to disturb the pigment after it's dried a little bit. And that creates some texture in the background. That should give me some interesting effects when it's dry. So I let it dry and then I take the tape off. So there's my finished painting. This painting only took me about an hour and a half or so to complete. It was quick and it was lots of fun to paint. Recapping what I talked about at the start of the video, when I paint white subjects, I look hard at the photo or whatever it is I'm painting and I look for variations of colours in the shadows and I look for reflected light as well. Sometimes the colour of something nearby might be reflected on the subject. I usually keep my colours fairly pale on the subject itself. Sometimes I'll exploit what I see and I'll take some artistic license and add colours that I don't see and accentuate colours that I do. Sometimes I'll paint a background and other times I don't feel it's necessary. So there you are, white subjects are beautiful too and they're not that difficult to paint. Thanks for watching. I hope I gave you some useful information. Give this video a like, hit the subscribe button, and I'll be back soon with a new video for you. Sometimes all I see is grey, and to make I've painted quite a few different what? Stop Sometimes all I see is grey and to make the subject more interesting I'll paint the shadow areas of it in grey I've got blood, blood all over my hands So there you are, white subjects are beautiful too and they're not that difficult to paint.